Hello YouTubers, this is Jacques Gaines from The Moving Icon and today I am going to give you my review of the Panasonic FZ2500. Hey YouTubers, I just wanted to mention that some of this stuff is filmed from another day and other from today and it's all mixed in. What happens is I went to a photo shoot with the camera and I filmed a bit as well. So there were a couple of other points that I forgot to mention and I'm bringing them in now. And another thing is today in the video, I will be talking about the FZ2500, the Sony RX10 Mark One, Mark Two, and Mark Three. And I wanted to tell you guys, if you want to support me, just click the link uh, in the uh, description below. It will send you to the uh, Amazon site and uh, you can buy it from there. If you buy it from there, it gives me a small cut. And that's a lot of fun for me, supports my channel and supports what I do. Uh, so YouTubers, as you probably know, I've been using this thing right here, which is the Panasonic FZ2500 bridge camera. Now I'm giving you a review. It's a detailed review, but before we start with the review, I want to talk about my workflow so that you guys can either tune out or stay with me. I am a videographer. I also do a lot of photography. My whole channel is about my learning process, learning how to do photography and learning uh, photography techniques. So as I learn new stuff about a camera and then I learn how to apply that camera and that gear to that technique, that's how I base my review. I am gonna concentrate on certain things and other things I'm gonna just completely ignore. Otherwise, the, this review is gonna be an hour long. So let me talk to you about the things that I will ignore. Anything involving sort of the semi-automatic stuff and some of the gimmicks of this camera. I will not be looking at those. Three other aspects I will not be looking at are 4K photo, post focus and focus stacking because I have decided to make that the subject of another video. I need to talk about optical quality. I will be talking about sensor ability and most of all ergonomics. These are the bottlenecks that we have to make sure are good for the camera to be worth it or not. So let's just start by looking at the camera, looking at what it's all about and let's look at the specs and what this camera has to offer. The Panasonic DMC FZ2500 is Panasonic's flagship super zoom bridge camera. It has a 21.1 megapixel one inch BSI CMOS sensor. The lens is a super zoom with a 24 to 480 35 millimeter equivalent focal range. Its F equivalent closes from 2.8 at the wide end to 4.5 zoomed in. It has a three inch 1.04 million dot articulating touchscreen LCD and a 2.36 million dot OLED viewfinder. It is massive and it's heavy. Ergonomically speaking, this camera is not for someone who wants to travel light. Also, what must be noted is that unlike its predecessor, its zoom fully extends and stays extended once it is turned on, increasing its massiveness. Let me go on the record and say that as much as I thought it would be a bonus to have a camera with a fixed length once you turn it on, it makes this camera a big ass camera. If I take this camera right now and I zoom it out, I can tell you with confidence it's, it's just gigantic. And when you put it on, it stays this big. It doesn't actually get smaller when you zoom out or zoom in. Once you get into this quality of super zoom cameras and you want to uh, have optical integrity and a lot of light coming in, you cannot go for a smaller lens. Therefore, the lens has to be big. And if you look at this camera right now, you can see the brunt of the size of this camera is the actual lens right here. Underneath you have the body, which is relatively normal. But once you get into something like this, which goes out, and zooms to 480 millimeter equivalent. To keep that optical integrity, you need a bigger lens.
build quality. So in terms of build, build quality, I've been reading a couple of critiques on this camera and I have a peep feeling that people are giving it a bit of a hard time. They say it's a lot more plasticky uh, than let's say the RX-10 uh, Mark III, Mark II, Mark I. I wouldn't say it's pl more plasticky than those brands. I believe that it's just a different type of feel to it because when you actually take some of these these uh, dials and you move them, they're very, very solid. I used to own the FZ1000 and nothing ever broke down, nothing broke off. So it is a hefty, strong, good camera. Everything is well made on it. It reeks of quality, it reeks of quality. Now, in terms of actual grip and how it feels when I actually use this camera, the test I do when I'm looking at a grip and how it feels, I take the strap off and I walk around with it and shoot with it a little while. And I feel how safe it feels in my hand. And the grip on the FZ2500 is really, really well made. It's got a nice groove and a curve and it's got a little groove on the inside here. So ergonomically, in terms of grip, it's really, really nice. Other things that are really cool is you have a whole ton of function buttons. Another thing I wanna point out is that they took the actual card slot, they put it on the side. Now the card slot is on the side. So when you do have a tripod locked in there, you can actually get to your card and change your memory card. But they have also guys taken the screw, the screw mount, and they've moved it away from the actual battery slot here. Uh, one of the critiques of the FZ1000 is that this screw was way too close to the battery door. So once you put a plate on, you couldn't open and change out your batteries. So that I thought was a bonus that they did that. Small detail on the ergonomics, which I thought was crazy, uh, was the lens cap. Now, this is really weird and I find this is a crazy oversight, but the lens cap, once you put it on, it's not secure at all. It's a 16, 67 millimeter lens cap. If you put this lens cap on and you put it on safely and you feel that it's safe in there. I, I didn't even touch the lever on that one. I'll do it again for you. You feel that it's safe and you just flick that thing off. It just pops off. So that lens cap is chintzy, not very good. They should do a recall. A lot of nice features also are the three function buttons, completely 100% assignable. You can assign those buttons to whatever function you like while you're shooting. If you have a video workflow, you might wanna assign these to very quick video functions. If you have a photo workflow, you might wanna assign them to very quick photo functions. Um, what is also really nice is that these function buttons are on a place where a lot of videographers like to have that button on the side of the lens your LCD and EVF, you have a 0.74 magnification giving you great visibility of what you're taking a picture of. The LCD is great quality and a pleasure to work with. Unfortunately with that is that all the input and output jacks are placed where the flip out screen comes out. Now, it doesn't sound like a big thing, but if you place any sort of external audio input or an HDMI for monitoring out, or you have an external recorder, and you wanna flip this screen to look over towards that way, do any sort of selfie function, uh, well, you're gonna have wires popping in front of your screen, and that is just not a cool thing. The EVF LCD, top of the line, the touch quality, the feeling when you touch, it's secure, it feels good, it works very well, the menu functions are really nice on this camera. Now, we have basically all the functions we had in the FZ1000. I have already made a video telling people, you know, this might not be the camera for you. If you wanna save some cash, you might be a good idea to go get the FZ1000 bridge camera if you're gonna do photography functions for two big reasons. One is there's not a lot of upgrading going on in this camera besides the gadgetry. You have high photo burst rate on the FZ1000. You have 4K photo. You have a couple of other things on the FZ1000. You're gaining a couple of things. You're gaining post focus and focus stackings, but they tend to be gadgetry. And another point I'd like to make, which I will be making later on, is that in terms of optics, you're not gaining any Anything. You're gaining more zoom and you're only gaining 80 millimeters. So this might not be the photo camera for you.
Now, without further ado, let's go into what this camera is all about, and that's the video. The video is amazing. So far, I filmed with this thing, and I am utterly impressed. It is an upgrade from the FZ1000 in terms of just likability of the image you're looking at. I can even go so far as to say that it's, it's starting to be likable enough for me to like it as much as Canon. Now, the reason why I like the Canon look is just because I like the Canon look. It doesn't mean it's a better look. It just means I like it a lot. But the last images I took in low light conditions, I looked at this, the shots. The video is absolutely amazing and it looks great. It has this cinema feel to it that's really, really nice. What you now have in this camera is it offers 4K, but it also offers 4K cinema which is a, a bit of a larger dimension on your frame. You have UHD and you have QFHD forms. There's no more 30 minute limit when you film with this camera, which is an absolute bonus whenever you actually have a video workflow where you have to film live events. It is really cool. That being said, remember that we're still working on a FAT32 file system. So as the file gets bigger and bigger, it's split into pieces. Uh, so you always have to pre-render a video when you actually want to do multicam sync. Now system frequencies on this camera, it's kind of fun. They up the ante, you get NTSC and you get PAL, but you also get a cinema frequency. Now other tools for great video capture, listen, the list is very long, but it's always worth mentioning and I want you guys to know all this stuff. This camera offers focus peaking, zebra pattern, master pedestal level, minus 15 to plus 15, luminance level, time code, count up, time code value, time code mode in drop frame, non-drop frame, wow. It's no wonder why Panasonic themselves say this is the little brother to the GH4. Another video highlight about this camera is variable frame rates. Now, variable frame rates, it's pretty cool when you can go and put your camera into slow-mo and get slow-mo shots, it's a lot of fun. But this camera benefits from a couple of variable frame rate settings. You can go into just straight slow-mo, but you also have a place in the menu called variable frame rates. You go into that and you have frame rates from a super low frame rate to super high, meaning you have super fast, you can have super fast uh, images or you can have super slow-mo and everything in between. You're not locked into certain frame rates. You also have on the fly changing of frame rates while filming. So you can be filming and you can press a button and you're in slow and you press another button and you're in fast. It's really cool for your creativity and I think it's quite a bonus. What is my conclusion to the Panasonic FZ2500? Well, here's what I think guys. I think Panasonic produced a camera that was a video camera. It is a video camera with a photography form factor. So I think the FZ2500 is a camera for people whose priority is video and just so happen to want to take great stills. Let me talk about some of the pros, how I feel about the pros and how I feel about the cons. And again, it's all personal people. Don't get mad at me. So the big pros for me are the following. Uh, the ergonomics of the camera, amazing. Autofocus, you're talking just great autofocus, be it in video or in photo. I've had no problems. If you have, tell me. The 4K is spectacular, and now it's even more spectacular. ND filters is a great bonus. The fact that it's the GH4's little brother. LCD and EVF are really fantastic. A big upgrade from the FZ1000. Uh, vlog for $99, uh, you can get 12 stops of dynamic range. Anyone who's into grading, you're gonna love this camera. 10-bit uh, 422 output and record. I think these things are just really fantastic parts of a camera that's just like a bridge. Now the cons of this camera. I think the biggest con on this camera is the lens. It's okay if you zoom in a bit, it gets, it's pretty damn mushy. It's surprising how mushy it is. And if you compare it with its other counterpart, which is the RX10 Sony Mark III, you are talking about 
just not the same quality. The RX-10 Mark III, as much as I find Sony products expensive, I have a feeling that one of the big reasons why the RX-10 Mark III is a lot more expensive is the glass. It's really a lot better than the FZ2500. Uh, I would even venture, and don't freak out on me, that the, the FZ2500's glass is not as good as the FZ1000. Now, battery life suffers as well. I guess it's due to the fact that the zoom extends out and stays out and sort of waiting, so they need, electron they need electricity to keep all that stuff going. I'm not sure, but the battery life does suffer a tiny bit, and on all mirrorless, uh, the less battery life you have, the less fun it can be. So who is this camera for? Well, I think this camera is for video enthusiasts. Video people will just adore it. Even guys who do it at an amateur level, there's a lot of gadgetry on the variable frame rate and stuff like that, which can make it a lot of fun for anyone who films or does their own little uh, personal music videos or whatever. Now, it can also be a blog and vlog all in one, in the sense that it has uh, all the features that it, uh, the, uh, uh, FZ1000 had so you have time lapse in there you have a super zoom so you can go get b-roll and establishing shots uh, with this camera if you don't mind the bulkiness it's an excellent blog and vlog all in one another person this is for is anybody looking for a great B cam any owner of a GH4 Anybody who has a GH4, go out and buy one of these right away. This can be easily handed off to an assistant. Let's say you're shooting any sort of gig and you get your assistant to bring all your equipment in. There's always that time where the assistant just sort of waits around. Well, you can throw this camera, put this baby in IA, give it to an assistant, tell them, listen, keep your hands steady, go get me B-roll. And while you're doing an interview or something like that, the assistant can be filming. So it's a fantastic B-cam. Another person this camera is for are super tourists. A lot of people who are really enthusiasts, uh, photo enthusiasts, and you travel a lot. A lot of people who are retired would uh, love this camera because you can go out, get some excellent quality photos, excellent quality video. You really cannot mind the bulkiness though. It's always boils down to that. But I think that a lot of uh, people who are on their retirement and would like to really get into camera equipment and gear, this might be a great way to start. You learn about aperture, you have a larger one inch sensor so you can learn about depth of field, you can get that defocus background, it's a really good camera for that. Anybody doing portraits, landscapes, or any sort of strict photo workflow, don't go out and buy the FZ2500. I don't think it's a good idea. I think you might be better off getting an RX-10, even the Mark I or the Mark II, which have been brought down in price. You're getting excellent, excellent Zeiss glass on those cameras, and that might be a bigger priority for you. So that's it guys. Now, before I leave, I just want to know from you guys, uh, your workflow and how this the FZ 2500 might fit your workflow. Have you had any experiences with the FZ 2500? Has it been good or bad? Uh, tell me about it. Let's talk about it. Let's get people that, cause I think a lot of people look at these videos to decide whether they're gonna buy the camera or not. The more comments we have below, the better it is for people to make a decision. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram for my high quality stuff. Check out Behance. If you like this video, do not forget to click the thumbs up at the bottom. If you want to keep in cahoots with what I do, subscribe. And don't forget everybody, keep on making something from nothing. Mm -hmm.